mind joining? Hello, this is Dale. Morning, sir. Good morning, Dale. Morning. Sure, as long as you close it. Good morning. Will the clerk please call the roll? Good morning. Calling the roll for the February 8th Board of Control meeting. It is 11.01. We have Dale Miller. Here. Nan Baker. Nan Baker. Trevor McAleer serving as an alternate for Pernell Jones. Here. Lee Tucker serving as an alternate for the fiscal officer. Here. Nicole English serving as an alternate for Mike Dever. Here. Lenora Lockett. Here. Nan Baker. Sharon, Nan, Nan was on she a, was. a minute ago. I'll, I'll, shoot her, I'll shoot her a message. Okay, thank you. Do you want to pause or go on? Okay, let's continue. Um, let's review the minutes from uh, last week's Board of Control from 2 1 2021. Um, Are there any corrections to the minutes? If, if there is no corrections to the minutes, I'd like to make a motion to approve the minutes. Do I have a second? Seconded by Mr. McAleer. All those in favor of approval of minutes indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Minutes approved. Any public comment? Okay, hear no public comments. Sure. We'll Councilwoman Baker got disconnected. She she's rejoining now. She she just wrote back. Thank you. Thanks, mm -hmm. Trevor. Um, if I may call the roll for Nan Baker. Do we have Councilwoman Baker? This is uh, Nan Baker calling in. Sorry for that disconnection. Oh, that's it. Thank you. Moving on to the first item, item BC 2021-53, Department of Public Works requesting authority to prepare an amendment to a contract with Project Management Consultants, LLC, for owner's representation, representative services in connection with the Justice Center Complex project for the period January 9, 2019, through January 8th, 2021, to extend the time period to January 8th, 2022. No additional funds required. Nicole English with Public Works. Um, this is just to extend the contract for PMC. Uh, the Justice Center project was on hold for a good portion of 2020 because of COVID. Um, and so 
The scope has not changed. It just is going to take a little bit longer um, to finish it. So we're asking to extend this for another year. No additional funds. Thank you. Are there any questions on this item? Hearing no questions, I make a motion to approve this item. Is there a second? Second, Man Baker. Seconded by Councilwoman Baker. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Item approved. Next item. Next item is the 2021-54 Department of Public Works submitting an amendment to a contract with Diocese of Cleveland Facility Services Corporation for lease of office space located at Fatima Family Center, 6600 Lexington Avenue, Cleveland, for use by Division of Children and Family Services for the period January 1st, 2010 through December 31st, 2020. To extend the time period to December 31st, 2025, and for additional funds in the amount not to exceed $49,550. Good morning, this is John Myers from Department of Public Works uh, presenting this amendment on behalf of Children and Family Services for this smaller uh, one office at the uh, Fatima Center at East 66 and Lexington, a location that we've been at for um, quite a few years and this lease is up for renewal in the amount as stated of $49,550 for the next uh, five years. Okay, thank you. Are there any questions on this item? Uh, just one, Nan Baker. Uh, first, to thank you for your explanation. Uh, do we believe that we will be continuing this after five years? Is this an ongoing lease that we can see lasting many years to come? Um, in, uh, uh, to Councilwoman Baker, uh, I have to defer to Children and Family Services for these decisions, and uh, we're, we're here to, to help them and assist them. As far as I know, it's been a longstanding uh, program, and I don't know all the details of the program, but uh, we've been there for a long time, and um, uh, while this lease uh, provides for five years, uh, we've ensured that we can exit the lease uh, on relatively short time frame should the needs of children and family services change. Okay, and, and as I asked, it's approximately um, 10,000 per year, and how many square feet did you say it was? I believe it's 763 square feet, so it's a smaller unit that's part of the larger center. Um, this is uh, an outreach uh, community satellite type setting. Okay. Well, good. Well, thank you for those details. I appreciate it. Thank you. Any additional questions? I hear no additional questions. I make a motion to approve this item. Is there a second? I'll second, Nan Baker. Seconded by Councilwoman Baker. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Next item, item approved. Next item. Next item, BC 2021-55, Department of Public Works, recommending an award on requisition 3621 and enter into a contract with Suburban Maintenance and Construction Incorporated in the amount not to exceed $257,469 for Hillside Road rehabilitation of existing bridge number 03.81 over the Cuyahoga River in the city of Independence and Village of Valley View. Nicole English with Public Works. This is an award of a construction contract. The engineer's estimate was 275,000. So this is under by about 6.4%. Um, they were the low bidder and we're looking um, to have this construction uh, completed within around the next three months by the early summer. Thanks, are there any questions on this item? Hearing no questions, I move to approve this item. Is there a second? Second, this is Dale. Seconded by Councilman Mil Miller. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Mm -hmm. Item approved. Next item. Next item, BC 2021-56, Department of Public Works, submitting an RFP exemption on requisition 4405 which will result in an award recommendation to Pitney Bowes Incorporated in the amount not to exceed $197,659.44 for the 
for estate contract purchase, release, maintenance, and support services of mailing equipment located at various county buildings for the period December 1st, 2020 through November 30th, 2023, and recommending the award in connection with said RFP exemption. Uh, good morning, Tom Pavis, Public Works. Uh, this item, we're looking to make an award recommendation to Penny Bowes that's a not to exceed dollar amount. It's a three year contract uh, for the maintenance and support for the mail machine, mailing equipment located in multiple uh, county buildings. Uh, this is off of a state of Ohio contract, uh, which was competitively bid, and uh, this is uh, a three year contract. Okay, thank you. Are there any questions on this item? And hearing no questions, I make a motion to approve this item. Is there a second? Second. Ms. English. All those in favor, say aye. aye. Opposed? Aye. aye. Thank you. Item approved. Next item. Thank you. Next item, BC 2021-57, Department of Public Safety and Justice Services, recommending an award on a purchase order to Motorola Solutions Incorporated in the amount not to exceed $462,231 for the purchase of 276 P25 portable radios and accessories for use by law enforcement departments in various communities. Good morning, this is Mary Beth Vaughn from Public Safety, and these radios are going to be used by the following police departments, Beechwood, East Cleveland, Lynnhurst, Oakwood Village, Shaker Heights, University Heights, and Walton Hills. This purchase was competitively bid. We received two compliant bids, and we're making an award recommendation to the lowest cost vendor. This is being funded with grant Hello. dollars, and the Hi, award has been approved by Ohio EMA. Thank you. Are there any questions on this item? Okay, hearing no questions, I make a motion to approve this item. Is there a second? Second. This is Trevor. Second by Mr. Mac All those in favor say aye. 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 Item approved. Next item. Next item, BC 2021-58, Court of Common Pleas, Juvenile Court Division recommending a sole source award on a purchase order to Power DMS Incorporated in the amount not to exceed $17,250.15 for the purchase of 650 Power DMS user licenses and related training services. Hi, this is Priscilla Bottomley from the Juvenile Court. Um, we are requesting a sole source award to Power DMS. Um, Power DMS is a cloud-based software that stores and distributes content online. Um, this will provide uh, practical tools to organize and manage our um, documents, such as our current procedures, any policy changes, and this will also allow us to train and test employees online. Um, this is a OCJS grant funded. Um, and if you have any other questions, there's Ted Love from IT. Are there any questions on this item? Hearing none, I make a motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Ms. English. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Item approved. Next item. Next item, BC 2021-59, Department of Health and Human Services, Division of Children and Family Services, submitting an RFP exemption on requisition 4082, which will result in award recommendations to the providers listed on the printed agenda 1 through 18 in the total amount not to exceed $400,000 for adoption services for the period January 1st, 2021 through December 31st, 2022, and requesting authority to prepare a master contract with the providers in connection with said RFP exemption. Good morning, Paul Porter, Health and Human Services on behalf of the Division of Children and Family Services. This is a master agreement that DCFS does every two years to help families who are adopting children. Um, the families under state and federal law get to choose the adoption agencies that they work with for adoption services. So we do a master agreement with agencies that families have worked with in the past, anticipating that they might come back to us working with families in the future. 
I will note that since families get to choose, we sometimes have to add vendors to the master agreement during a period of the master agreement if the family wanted to work with an agency that's not currently listed. But this is a fairly comprehensive list that includes many local vendors as well as some vendors in other parts of the country that we've worked with in the past. And competitively procuring this wouldn't really be ideal since the families get to choose the vendors that they work with. Thank you. Are there any questions on this item? Okay, there are no questions. I make a motion to approve this item. Is there a second? I'll second Ann Baker. Seconded by Councilwoman Baker. All those in favor say aye. 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 Item approved. Next item. Next item, BC 2021-60, Department of Health and Human Services, Cuyahoga Job and Family Services, submitting an RFP exemption on requisition 4277, which will result in an award recommendation on a state contract to CBTS Technology Solutions, LLC, in the amount not to exceed $71,175, for voice over internet protocol call center operations in connection with Cuyahoga County SNAP Telework for performance project for the period February 1st, 2021 through May 31st, 2022, and uh, requesting authority to prepare contract in connection with said RFP exemption. Good morning, Paul Porter, Health and Human Services on behalf of Cuyahoga Job and Family Services. This is a submission to join a state contract for a voice over internet mm -hmm. protocol calling services. We're entering into this contract after receiving a grant from the USDA as part of the process and technology improvement grant fund program that the Department of Agriculture has rolled out to help make uh, applications for SNAP, the Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program, easier for clients who are applying. This specific service will allow CJFS caseworkers to utilize their computers as phones without having to have a separate standalone phone. And one big positive of this is that supervisors and managers can work with staff and look at screen captures of the activity taking place on the screen and link that up with the discussion during the call. So it's a really valuable monitoring and QA tool that our system right now doesn't allow. The reason we're joining this contract is because there's a volume discount associated with this service. This is a statewide contract that has a discount for every 10,000 users across the state. And if we were to procure this on our own versus using uh, the state contract, our costs would be much higher because we have a lower number of users than what the state network has. And again, this is partially grant funded and this specific service was written into the grant application. Thank you. Are there any questions on this item? Uh, just one comment, Nan Baker. Uh, sounds like a really good uh, contract to enter into. So. Good job in uh, researching this and bringing it forward. Thank you. Okay. Any additional questions or comments? If I, if I could just say, uh, uh, this is uh, David Berriman on behalf of the Department of Health and Human Services. Councilman Baker, I'll, I'll share your compliment with Kevin Gowan. I know that Kevin, uh, Kevin personally managed this grant application. It's something he's extremely proud of. I know his team is on this call listening to answer questions about this or the next item. Uh, he, he had to utilize his furlough hours, so he's not available today, but he's personally committed to it. And I, uh, I appreciate your acknowledgement and I'll share your, uh, I'll share your remarks with him. Thank you. Thank you, I appreciate that. It's, uh, I'd love to hear how we do, maybe perhaps when we come up for um, request again. So thank you for the effort. Be sure to thank him for me. Will do. Okay, any additional questions? Okay, hearing no additional questions, I make a motion to approve this item. All those in favor? Oh, do I get a second? I'll second, Nan Baker. Thanks, Councilwoman Baker. All those in favor, say aye. 
Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Item approved. Next item. Next item, BC 2021-61, Department of Health and Human Services, Cuyahoga Job and Family Services, submitting an RFP exemption on requisition 4639, which will result in an award recommendation to Clarity Solutions Group, LLC, in the amount not to exceed $98,648 for consulting services to address the technological process data and training needs in connection with telework for performance project for the period January 1st, 2021 through December 31st, 2021 and recommending the award in connection with said RFP exemption. Good morning, Paul Porter again, Health and Human Services for Cuyahoga Job and Family Services. This is a companion item to the item that was just approved. As part of our implementation of this new program, we're looking to contract with a consulting group where the principal has specific experience across the state of Ohio, including working with specific large counties and the state network itself, as well as experience implementing similar call centers outside the state of Ohio. So when we were looking at rolling out this new project, we sought expert assistance and included this as part of our grant application to have someone on board who can help us roll this out. And Mr. McCammon, the principal for Clarity Solutions Group is who we chose to do that. So again, this specific vendor was written into the grant application and this project is going to be funded with a mixture of grant funds and those federal funds. Thank you. Are there any questions on this item? I'm sorry. I apologize. Grant funds and levy funds. Okay. Thank you for the oh, clarification. I'm very back. I'm so sorry. I didn't want to ignore your call, but I'm in the middle of a meeting. Um, is it possible Can someone put their phone on mute who's talking in the background? Yeah, mute yourself. Hopefully about 10 minutes. Thank you. Are there any questions on this item? This is Nan Baker. I have a question. Uh -huh. So the um, consultant that we're um, going to be hiring as requested, the dates don't align with the project. Um, 2-1-21 to May of next year, and this one is January of this year till the end of the year. So is there a reason why we didn't align the two to match? That's my first question. Sure, thank you, Councilwoman Baker. Um, some of the work that's being done on the part of the consultant is preparation work before the new system will roll out. So getting us ready to move into the new system. So that's why it's important for the consultant to be able to do work starting right away. The vendor for the new call center, we won't start getting charged for that until after the call center is up and running. So we won't get charged during the uh, period of installing that call center technology, for instance. That's part of the reason that um, it, those aren't lined up. And the reason the call center goes into next year is because that's when we anticipate the call center fully starting up and being up and running. Um, the service fees would start later in 2021, so they would carry over into 2022, while we expect that the consultant would be able to finish their work during calendar year 2021. I will ask if anybody from the CJFS implementation team wants to add anything to that. I know. Are there any additional um, questions? Porter, if I may ask a follow up to that. When Absolutely. do we expect? Uh, when do we expect that this will be ready for calls and implemented? It's uh, the contract, as you stated, um, starts February first of this year. But when will we actually be on the ground running? Um, I can email you back with an exact on that, but I believe we're looking at around May and June for the switch over mm -hmm. to this system. All right, so we've got about five months of preparation and then maybe a year of implementation. Correct, for the actual services where we'll be charged to feed, that's correct. Okay, 
All right. Thanks for the clarification. If that's, you know, what it is, that's, that's close enough. I appreciate your answer. Thank you. Are there any additional questions? Hearing no additional questions, I make a motion to approve this item. Is there a second? I'll second, Man Baker. Seconded by Councilwoman Baker. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Item approved. Next item. Next item, BC 2021-62, Department of Health and Human Services, Community Initiatives Division, Office of Homeless Services, submitting an amendment to a contract with Mental Health Services for Homeless Persons Incorporated, doing business as frontline service for coordinated intake and assessment services for homeless individuals and families for the period January 1st, 2018 through December 31st, 2021, for additional funds in the amount not to exceed $432,721. Good morning, Melissa Surak with the Office of Homeless Services requesting an amendment to, a data, to add additional grant dollars for our grant with mental health services, doing business as frontline service for coordinated entry system services. Coordinated entry serves as the central access point for anyone seeking emergency shelter in Cuyahoga County. They assess every individual and family's housing crisis, diverting from shelter when possible. And the 2009 HARP Act requires that the continuums of care establish a coordinated entry system to ensure that those who are most vulnerable and literally homeless are prioritized for service. There are two grant awards funding this amendment, the Ohio Development Services Agency, Homeless Crisis Response Program, and Cuyahoga County Emergency Solutions Grant dollars. Both funding sources identify coordinated entry as a qualifying element for award dollars. Thank you. Are there any questions on this item? Hearing no questions, I make a motion to approve this item. Are there any seconds? Second, Mr. Chairman. Seconded by Mr. McAleer. All those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed? Aye. Item aye. approved. Aye. Next item. Moving on to exemptions, item BC 2021-63, Department of Information Technology, recommending an alternative procurement process, which will result in an award recommendation to Amazon Web Services Incorporated in the amount not to exceed $150,000 to provide hosting services to provide employee access to the Enterprise Resource Planning System for the period February 16th, 2021 through August 15th, 2022. Good morning, Janelle Green on the behalf of the Department of IT. Um, this is an alternative procurement uh, to enter into a contract with um, AWS or Amazon Web Services to provide a hosted environment um, for our ERP service that will allow um, HHS and other um, non-executive agencies to directly connect over into the ERP without having to utilize the county VPN. Um, since those other departments um, have a other, another primary system or environment, um, it does take time for those, for those areas to kind of toggle in between the systems. Having to uh, log into the VPN means they can't um, access um, items in their home system, um, which causes a severe delay for them to be able to process uh, transactions through the ERP. Um, the reason this is an alternative procurement is because um, we want to engage on the state contract that currently exists um, with uh, DAS through the state. However, uh, DAS did not do a, a competitive process um, like they do for their normal state term um, procurements. And so uh, this is why we are seeking um, the approval uh, to enter into this contract with AWS. Are there any questions on this item? Hearing none, I make a motion to approve. Sure you, just, oh, oh just sorry, one, go ahead. Mr. Trevor, uh -huh. Just one quick question. Janelle, you know, could this it, could this be sole source or or no? Are there other? I mean, I know there's a limited number of vendors yeah. that provide this service, but right, there are other. There are other um, services that are out there. Um, they're significantly smaller um, and more not as known as AWS um, um, for these services. So um, it, it wouldn't necessarily be a sole source. Okay, but we, we use this application, right, for other 
agency, right, already. I mean, I know working with Jonathan and Greg, I think they use, use this for, for other stuff, too. Right, so, Amazon so, Web Services uh, provides a, a hosted um, environment for a number of, of different things that we have through the county as well, um, but that still um, wouldn't necessarily be a, a sole source. Sole source, uh, right, okay. Thanks, Janelle. Sure. Any additional questions? Uh, just one, Nan Baker. Uh, and I'm just asking the security on this, is that all, and is that part of this um, request or does it need to be? Not. So, okay. so Amazon. Um, Amazon does provide security services on this um, on their hosted environment, but um, a lot of the security items that we already have procured would would be uh, also used over here. So, um, for example, when uh, people are logging in to the ERP, um, they have a service called ADFS, which requires um, the users to be validated through our Active Directory or our Microsoft services in order to even access these applications. So all of that would still apply. So all of those services that kind of were kind of carried over into this service as well. All right, that's good to know. And is that done within the last year? Is that a new service? Um, this is something um, the ADFS has been um, implemented implemented um, once we started ERP. So anytime we have to, and it, you know, there's a timeout factor. So anytime you go in and probably five minutes of, of non-use, the system times out and has you log in again. So that's something that's been in um, that's been in use since um, we started uh, ERP. How about the um, added security for those working from home, which is what we're doing here in um, right. in this request? Does that security um, with I believe we've beefed up over the last year? Does that also involve in this process? Yes. So well, there's a couple of different things. So we've had security through the VPN tunnel. Um, we added into that. And also with this um, with this particular application, it would um, utilize other security services that um, would still provide um, more security for the users. So it's kind of um, they're along the same lines. It's just a different means of which to access the security. Okay. All right. Well, good. Thank you. I appreciate the explanation. Sure. Go ahead, Lenora. Lenora Lockett, Office of Procurement and Diversity. Um, Janelle, this is listed as an alternate procurement, but you've already, the vendor, you're using them because they're with the state. Is there a reason why, usually an alternate procurement is mean you're gonna do a process, but it's slightly different. So this is like an RFP exemption, basically. basically. Yes, um, and working with the law department on this, um, they, uh, with Jonathan McGorry, he did uh, suggest that we do an alternative procurement for this, this item that you call it an alternate procurement, but you're not doing an alternate due procurement. To, well, due to the fact that it's a state contract, but it's not state terms, because the state did not um, do a competitive bid process on this. So we are utilizing their contract um, um, in order to uh, gain the discounts that we get with Amazon Web Services. So law department did advise that we use alternative procurement um, okay. for, uh, for this particular transaction. Okay, so I'm not, that's fine. It, it, it could just as well be an RFP exemption because the alternate procurement, you're gonna do a process, but you're, they're, okay. they're just, okay. I understand the reasoning for selecting them. I'm just saying it's not an alternate procurement. Okay, great. Are there any additional questions on this item? Can, Madam Chair, can I just ask one follow-up question just based off what Lenora was asking there? We, I mean, we're not really going to do another process, right? The, the, the process is that we're just going with the state term pricing or, or, the, or the state pricing, right? Okay, I, 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 Correct. I just wasn't sure what Lenora was uh, getting at there in terms of what it should be versus uh, the alternative procurement process because I just want to make sure that we were going to go with the state uh, after this is done. Yes. Are there any additional questions? Hearing no additional questions, I make a motion to approve this item. Is there a second? Second, Mr. Trevor. 
seconded by Mr. McAleer. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Item approved. Next item. Next item, VC 2021-64, Department of Information Technology, recommending an alternative procurement process which will result in award recommendations to three independent contractors to be determined in the total amount not to exceed $360,000 for Enterprise Resource Planning System Support Services for a period of one year with staggered effective dates. Um, Janelle Green, Department of IT. So, um, as was previously mentioned in a, um, in a finance committee meeting, um, the Department of IT would like to engage three contractors to help us to support um, the ERP uh, of the modules that are live um, in the areas of, of fiscal, HR, and of course in the, I, in the IT um, background. Um, each of these contracts would be about $120,000. We are seeking an alternative of procurement in order to allow us to engage other um, services to um, attract um, ind independent contractors. So the traditional um, bid process would not be appropriate uh, uh, in order to seek those particular kinds of contractors. So we would be, we have been working with um, the HR department in order to um, try to attract these individuals through other um, uh, job boards such as Indeed and ZipRecruiter, um, and then in turn have been interviewing a number of a number of candidates um, that could help us with this process. Um, we have uh, actually chosen this process in order to be able to leverage some cost savings to the county um, without having to go through um, larger, you know, uh, larger uh, vendors that would, of course, tack on. Um, some subsequent fees uh, on top of the consulting hour hourly rate. Thank you. Are there any questions on this item? Nora Lockett, go ahead. The Nora Office of Procurement and Diversity. So the process is that you're going to work with HR and go through um, job posting sites, or are you doing advertisement, or how would you? I mean, can somebody like say, here's a person and recommend it to you, or does it have to go through an HR site where they're doing the screening and looking at the process? Um, it's not necessarily reviewed by HR. HR has allowed us to utilize their um, accounts where they could, we could attract um, positions. So um, what happens with this is that um, we post, we still go through um, a screening process where they're also interviewed and um, and they're scored based upon um, you know uh, references based upon their resumes based upon their responses to technical questions. Um, so that is how they're determining best candidates um, that would move forward in the process. Okay, so this, uh, I'm just trying to figure out is there like going to be like a posting period because again, if someone questioned how did we get this vendor, was it by reference from somebody else? Did it come after a certain date? Is there going to be a time period? I'm just trying to figure out the structure. So when the contracts come before us, everyone has an idea what, how the pool was developed and what was the opportunities and how it was advertised to all. Um, well, yes, we would have all of that information laid out when we submit the, um, the subsequent uh, three contracts of how, um, what was the, the posting period, um, the listing of, of, of candidates and their scoring process. We do have all that documentation. Okay, usually when people present a alternate procurement, they provide those details so that the board knows what process you're going to use to select the contracts that will come forward. This is Jack Ryan. Is there a, I'm sorry, could you restate the question, Lenora? Usually when an uh, entity presents an a procure, alternate procurement process, they detail what process they're going to use especially since this is 120, 120,000, normally that would have to go through a formal process. So they might say, for instance, that we're going to use the vendors that are currently on state contract and ask them to submit a, submit a price proposal, or they might say we're going to advertise in this area and give responses through that portal. It sounds like you're, you're going through some type of HR, and I understand the reasoning, but do you have any more structure on the process? 
Right. So we, we, we can certainly detail it out, and we have, uh, uh, you know, been looking for qualified ERP certified and experienced uh, consultants, as I think probably a lot of people on the board know. Uh, the process that we're going to have gone through, uh, and we've got some individuals uh, selected, but we want to make sure that we get the alternative process in place here has been that we, we as, as uh, Janelle had mentioned, we've advertised on Indeed, uh, LinkedIn, also uh, kind of spread the net uh, for uh, personal rep references uh, from anybody that out there in the marketplace looking. Uh, that's netted uh, quite a number of candidates. Uh, we've interviewed them all. Uh, we've documented the interview process. It's just slightly different than hiring an employee, but a lot of the same, a lot of similarities in the process. We have documented the entire process, uh, and uh, you know, netted down, to, you know, how gone through that process to net down to one candidate for HR, one for fiscal, and one for technical support. Uh, these are going to be incredibly important to fill because of just the, uh, the the production support that we need in these areas. Uh, I would point out that going by going through this process, I know Janelle mentioned this, but the uh, the rate range that we're in for for by by doing this directly in the county is in the 95 to 115, 120 dollar an hour range. Uh, and the savings is significant up to this point when we've contracted directly through N4 as a vendor, the rates have been like 225 an hour. So there's a lot of incentive to do this process and significant savings for the county in, uh, in doing the, tr the recruiting uh, of these types of consultants on a direct 1099 contract basis. Hopefully that helps. So we've already done the process. Is that what we're seeing? I, which is fine. I'm just we trying to already, figure out. Yes, what, what, I'm sorry. So you've done the process. So you, yeah. So then we could probably that you advertise blah blah blah. And you received this number of candidates. That was. Yes. Yeah. We we we've gone through this process. Uh, gotten to the point where we uh, have three candidates that we want to bring to contract, and now are requesting the alternative procurement process be put in place so that we can bring the actual contracts forward mm -hmm. as quickly as possible. So usually you come before you do the process for alternative Well, we had procurement. discussions with people, uh, you know, going through this process, but we, we, these are extremely urgent that we, uh, that we get this help in place. I'm not questioning the urgency or the need. I'm just stating in general that before you do an alternate procurement process, you should come to the board because it's the board of control that approves the alternate procurement process that you're going to do. And then they have an understanding of what contracts will be coming for. We understand the need and why it's needed. We're struggling through the ERP system right now, so we understand the, the need. Okay. I'm gonna say this is Trevor. Go ahead, Trevor. Jeff, how, how many people were interviewed? I can I could certainly get you the exact number, but we probably uh, uh, kind of the exact range. There were probably uh, for these positions there were probably twenty to twenty-five candidates uh, identified out of the twenty to twenty-five. We did resume reviews and netted that down to approximately I guess eight or ten that we interviewed, and then went through the interview process to net down to three uh, people that we'd like to present as 1099 candidates. It, roughly those numbers, I can get you the exact numbers, I just don't have those in front of me right now. No, the, the ballpark's fine. How, how were the 25 or so resumes initially received though? Did we do a job posting or did we say we are going to hire, in essence, a vendor slash contractor? What, what, what was our original intent when we started this process? The, the job postings were done on ZipRecruiter and Indeed and some other boards. Uh, and they were very specific. The, the postings were, very, were, were for a contractor, not for an employee. We kept those, the process for uh, looking for 1099 contractors completely separate from the employee process so that there would be no conflict. Okay, so the intent the entire time was for a contractor not to look for an employee? 
That that's correct. Yes, that for these positions, yes. And then with with the recent announcement of Highland laying off uh, multiple uh, a bunch of employees, had, did we do any outreach to Highland to see if um, any of those employees would be interested in this process? No, I did not, because the, 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 the skill set that Highland has is not the skill set that we're looking for here. Here we're looking for specifically for INFOR certified experienced consultants um, that uh, in, in these very specific modules that we've mentioned, HR, fiscal, and very specific INFOR loss and technical support. That's not typically what Highland uh, has on board. So these three are what, I guess, the N4 certified or something? Is that even a thing? I mean, is that, is that a, a, you get a certification for working on oh, yeah. N4 products? Or? Absolutely you can. Uh, uh, you, you, there's various certifications within the N4 product line. And in each case, there's, these folks have, uh, in, in their areas, have uh, a strong certification, strong experience um, that, uh, that we need. And the difference between a 1099 contractor here and, and our internal staff is we've had extreme difficulty. It uh, would be great if we could hire certified folks directly and locally. And that, that has been, that's proven to be very, very difficult. So that's the reason we're looking for, uh, as, as an alternative to that, temporarily, not a permanent solution, these 1099 contractors to come in, augment our team. And uh, one of the key things they're gonna be doing is knowledge transfer to our team uh, while they're uh, helping take the workload here over the next six to 12 months. And I, I missed, why are we doing staggered effective dates? Is that just their availability or um, what, why are we doing stag staggered? We, we want to get them on board as quickly as we can. And, and it, it, you know, we, the, the dates are only dependent upon, yeah, their availability. As quickly as they're available is when we want to get them here. So, so to Lenore's point though, why, why are we coming with this alternative procurement process after the process is already done? I mean, we, it is typically done prior to uh, the alternative procurement process happening. Why, why is this coming after the fact? I think we, we're just trying to move as quickly as we can on this. Uh, I don't think we... When, when did we first post the consultant job, contractor job? I'd have to look back to see exactly what the posting date was. It was probably, uh, I want to say, mid-December, um, thereabouts. I mean, Jack, we couldn't get the alternative procurement process approval in the last two months on the Board of Control. I, oh, I think we were waiting to... I'm sorry. Um, this is Janelle. I'm just going to interject really quickly here. So, um, unfortunately, my task, my staff was really, really shorthanded at this point. Uh, we just got um, our newest employee online. So, unfortunately, um, this is one of the things that got caught up in the, in the delay. So, um, with me trying to understand the process, because I don't normally manually enter in those items myself, so I did this process so we can move this item forward. Um, before we engage into contracts with the independent individual uh, contractors. Thanks, Janelle. Thank mm -hmm. you. Nicole uh, English. With... One question. Oh, go ahead, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So the thank you, thanks, Jack. So the services are for one year uh, with staggered effective dates. Does that mean that these consulting services will only be needed for one year and that they, we won't be trying to fill them with an employee? Or do you think we would be asking for them to continue once their one year period is up? I, I think the way that we're funding this is uh, we're gonna do this for about six months, I think in each case, uh, with the option to extend. If we feel like it's necessary at that point, we'll revisit with a contract extension or amendment at that moment. Is this foreseen as a 
permanent position that you're going to eventually need to fill these vacancies, or is this just a one time get the job done and you're done? The way we're looking at this is more of a one time, you know, relieve the workload that we currently have. And uh, a key thing again is to have these folks do knowledge transfer to help, you know, it's a sort of a form of training, if you will, for our, our existing uh, staff of permanent uh, folks. So it's, it's, it's not a, not a long-term solution uh, by any means, uh, but it, it will help immensely in getting our own staff up to speed and trained and in relieving the current uh, large workload that we have uh, to get through in terms of resolving issues and assisting uh, these departments. And just one final question. So when we look at these contractors as being um, involved in trying to keep the process going and involved in training, does that borderline capital that we're not really in the process of, of continuing what's already been installed, but actually doing the day-to-day -day work? Is this day-to-day -day work that these people will be doing, enhancing what uh, is in place? Yes, this is production support, not implementation. So it would not be capitalized. Okay. All right. Thank you, Jack. Yes, ma'am. Just one last thing, this is Nicole. Would it be helpful, or I think it would be helpful to everyone, could you guys just um, document in, in writing the process that was followed so that everybody is clear? Um, since it already has been done, it should be fairly easy, because I looked at the backup and it just is a little bit generic. Right, yep, a absolutely, we can do that. So I, we'll, send that we'll send that over later on today. Thanks. In your documentation, this is Lee, can you include you said they were enforced certified, but I think they're Lawson certified. If they're enforced, well, in, I'm sorry. They're to be specific about it. They're they're in in for Lawson certifications. There's a variety of certifications that that uh, we could list for for these folks, and and some of them are Lawson. Some of them are in for architecture in general and the technical side. So it's sort of a mix of that terminology, I guess. I didn't. So the posting should probably have, you know, what you guys looked at for preference and requirements. I think that would help. Sure. When we, uh, when we send over the package of information, we'll be happy to include the specific posting so you can see the wording as well. Perfect. Okay. Madam Chair, this is Trevor. Just one follow-up question to Councilwoman uh -huh. Baker. Uh, Jack, did you... Uh, in your answer to me and say that we only need them for we believe six months with a possible extension that that's the current plan yes mm -hmm. so then why are we asking for a one year although we could term processor well i think that gives us the option to come back with an amendment if necessary so janelle i, I guess i can defer to you for some of the wording on that, but I believe that's the way we put these together. Um, I don't have the contract in front of me, um, but we can specify that out um, once we submit our response. I mean, I would be more comfortable with going for a six month period with staggered effective dates if that's all we're saying we need. And then the contract could obviously allow for contract extensions, which would just require to come back to board of control. Understood. We can do that. Understood. No problem. Okay, so we'll do an amendment to make it for six months. Um, are there any additional questions on this item? Yes, uh, this is Dale. I have some additional questions. Uh, the first question is whether the, the three candidates have accepted our offers. They, they are prepared to sign their, the best way to do that is these, these are not employee offers, so the best way I can answer that is they are prepared to sign contracts um, once they are properly approved by Border Control and presented back to them. And uh, secondly, uh, I don't have the start dates in front of me. Could you tell me what those mm -hmm. are? 
Uh, what we would like to do is start them as soon as they're approved in Border Control. And we would like those to get those to Border Control, uh, if possible, next week. So they may not be stag they may not be staggered dates at all. They may all occur on the same day, if we can make that happen. And uh, my other question is, uh, since we're now talking six months instead of a year, are we expecting that we would we would spend one hundred and twenty thousand dollars over six months rather than a year for each one? It, it would be 120000 for six months, yes. So that was the actual funding that made up the, the total amount for that was requested today. That's a pretty high rate. Not as high as, uh, as I mentioned, uh, the rates, the rates, uh, be happy to send over the rate tables and calculations along with the rest of the package, but we're, we're talking about rates of which are in, in this marketplace, those rates are extremely competitive compared with uh, going with a third party. If we've gone out to a third party, uh, as we've done before, uh, the rates would have been at least 30 to 40 percent higher. If we went to Infor for that same help, which they could provide, the rates would have been 225 an hour. So we would be looking at at least twice the the amount if we'd gone to N4 for this kind of help. By utilizing our own recruiting resources and uh, doing the, the all of the selection ourselves, we've saved ourselves, saved the county, that large amount of money. Okay. Jack, one more follow-up. How many hours per week? Is it full-time? Are they supposed to give 40 hours per week? Yes, uh, uh, for this period, we would expect them to be full, full time. Yeah. So they're full time for six months, right? And that's the plan. That's the plan. Yes, sir. And uh, is it straight forty hours? Do they get paid more under the contract if they work more than forty? It, it's straight hourly. So if and it's up to us to control those hours and manage those hours for those contractors. Okay. Um, and, and by the way, I, I would I would say this too, uh, just as an addition, uh, uh, different than we have done contracts before, uh, we have a in this environment we felt it was prudent and would save some additional money if we had uh, remote rates uh, and on-site rates. So since a lot of the work can be done remotely, we felt it would save probably. Uh, it's upwards of 15 to 20 bucks an hour, an hour uh, by by writing the contract in a way that would provide for remote and on-site rates, on-site rate being higher, so uh, to cover travel expenses. So that's the way we that's how closely we've managed the approach here. And, and you're comfortable with knowledge transfer being done remotely? I am. I am. Not all of it. You know, there's on there's obviously in every case there's the expectation we're going to have these folks on site, uh, as you know, in accordance with whatever COVID rules exist. You know, as we go forward here. So. Well, hopefully in six months we don't need to extend these contracts. I I hope. Yes, sir. So, Jack, if I may ask, um, if we're talking about six months. That would be they sign them up for February 15th. That would take them through to August 15th. And mm -hmm. if you had any staggering in there, um, say you, is it possible you could start the next one on March 1st, and then they would go six months to September 1st, and then maybe April 1st to October 1st. I mean, how are how are you thinking the six months will take effect, and when would the last ending date be yes i didn't i don't i didn't come prepared with the math for the all the dates but uh uh i don't have that in front of me but we we have that all specifically worked out based on the start date uh if, if we can start everybody i mean the goal again would be to start everyone as, as quickly as possible so if we get a border 
Board of Control approval next week, we would start them that quickly. The advantage, of course, of these folks is that they come on board and can hit the ground running because we don't have to train them in INFOR. They are the experts at INFOR. Um, we can give you specific end dates based on, based on the, uh, um, the projections that we've done. I just don't have that in front of me right now. So if you were to start them, say, as soon as possible, and maybe that would be a week from today, the 15th of February, six months from the 15th of February is August 15th. You yes, still have the rest of the year to go, and I know payroll is scheduled for the first uh, payroll in January of 22. Uh, how does that August look? Do you think you can accomplish what you need to accomplish by August of this year? I, I believe we can. I understand what you're what you're asking here. Again, these these folks are primarily not here for for implementation support. They're here for production support of existing systems. Um, and uh, to that to that end, uh, by the fact that they are going to be, for example, uh, the person working in fiscal would be would be working on fiscal's you know production systems. Thereby taking the taking the load off of our existing team in that area, and, and by doing that, they can they can get back focused on on payroll, which we we you know had a, had an issue with here just because of the workload in, in fiscal closing and other things. For just to take that one person as an example. So. Okay, I just uh, I'm just a little concerned that in August we're going to go with another 360,000 to take them to the end of the year and maybe a few months into 2022. Do you foresee that happening? Is that part of this overall? Or do you think six months we're in, they're trained and we don't need them anymore? I, I would hope that we, that we would, the need would end in six months. I, I'm not gonna be the one to stand here and say that, uh, that that's an absolute. Uh, but uh, the goal is to, to have them in here for six months to, again, relieve the workload that we currently have by spreading that uh, to these consultants and to get the knowledge transfer done and, uh, and then uh, release these folks. I understand. Thank you, Jack. Yes, ma'am. Jack, is this, this is Trevor. Just to the end point, is there some type of tracking that you will be doing in, say, the weekly reports or your reporting to council of of the progress that these three contractors are making? I mean, do you have weekly goals or whatever to ensure this knowledge transfer is happening versus it being a surprise come August? Well, I, we, we will have, in each case, we'll have some, I mean, knowledge transfer is realized is, is only part of what they're gonna be doing. So for the knowledge transfer pieces, we will have specific goals, yes. For a lot of the work that they're going to be doing initially will be just helping us uh, reduce the uh, load of, of uh, dealing with issues and and uh, individual uh, tickets that we that we that we've got to resolve for uh, ERP users, um, and that you know that we don't. Obviously, we document that within the systems where we track all that stuff, but we, we don't typically publish that in a weekly report. We do publish, we have been publishing the, uh, uh, what, you know, the, the ticket load and the ticket, you know, dashboard, those kind of things are, are well known, uh, and they're, they're going to be engaged in a lot of that work as well. But we don't take it down to that detail level in a weekly report. I just would recommend maybe some you, type of progress report yeah. to. Oh, go ahead, Nick. You sorry. I think I know where you're um, going. Go I ahead. was just going to say, Trevor, in in uh, expanding upon your question, that when we see that we are delayed because of lack of um, people filling vacancies or knowledge or retraining and all that we've been told up till now, we should see that same. Uh, language saying that this is going to end that, that we shouldn't be seeing uh, lack of people, lack of knowledge, um, you know, the, that we're delayed because of personnel turnover. Is that what we're trying to accomplish here? 
Well, we're, we're trying to we're trying to beef up the ERP team with this knowledge and transfer this knowledge so that the core team can focus back on more on implementations and not get bogged down with production issues. That's those are the two goals: knowledge transfer and uh, and resolution of issues uh, that we have with production the production systems. And it's it's issues and improvements to production systems. So, um, so we have a backlog of those things that we need to that we need to clear. This this will help. And if I may, Jack, are these people um, accountable to you? Are you the one that will be overseeing their work and directing them where they need to go? Well, ultimately, they're accountable to me, but they're they're directly accountable to Bob Nolan, the ERP team, and and as the lead on the ERP team, uh, he'll be directing them. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yep. Are there any additional questions on this item? Okay, hearing no additional questions, I make a motion to approve as amended for the six month um, contract term. Is there a second? Second, this is Dale. Thank you, Councilman Miller. Um, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Aye. Item approved as amended. Next item. Next item, BC 2021-65, Department of Health and Human Services, <coughs> Cuyahoga Job and Family Services. Recommending to amend board approval number BC 2020-364, dated June 22, 2020, which amended board approval number BC 2020-302, dated May 26, 2020, which approved an alternative procurement process and exemption from aggregation on various purchase orders, resulting in various award recommendations to ACE Taxi in the total amount not to exceed $120,000 for non-emergency client transportation services by changing the time period from January 1, 2020 through December 31, 2021 to November 1, 2019 through December 31, 2021. No additional funds required. Hello all, this is Dan Basta, Health and Human Services on behalf of Job and Family Services. This item is for um, ACE Taxi, which is not the primary uh, user for the non-emergency transportation program. Uh, we, had to, we had to have an alternate procurement for ACE Taxi so that they would be eligible to, to give rides to these, these, these clients. Um, this is when the primary AmeriCab is not available. Um, we have been paying them off this alternate procurement for the, for the last year, but there is one invoice in particular that was um, out of the date range. Originally, the date range was from 1-1. Uh, as Sharon has stated, we need to have it uh, at 11-1-2019 because the service dates on this particular invoice were prior to 1-1. Uh, we tried to submit it uh, because the invoice actually had the date of 1-7, but the service dates were prior to that. So that provided us with a little bit of a, a problem so that we weren't able to pay this particular invoice. So this is just to change the date range, but no additional funds are required for this particular item. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Are there any questions on this item? Yes, uh, this is Dale, and uh, thanks very much for the uh, responses you gave to our advanced questions, which helped clarify some things about this item. And and my my question is uh, is what is what is the status of our uh, our procurement on on the main contract for non-emergency? transportation. The last I heard this was in the process of being put out. Uh, uh, Councilman, uh, you're under the same impression that I am. The, the RFP was set out, I believe, in September. Um, there, I, I believe our contract administration team is just about finished up with that. And they're going to be presenting it shortly. So, uh, 
Has a vendor been selected? I believe it has, yes. So could Council you sign out? Or, oh, oh, uh, I, I think I have uh, one of our representatives from our contract uh, administration team, Paul Porter. Yes, Councilman Miller, if I could just weigh in, a vendor has been selected and notified of their selection. Right now we are working on getting that contract prepared so it can be submitted and it'll go before County Council for approval. And can you tell me how many, how many bids were received and who the winning, winning bidder is? Sure. Um, again, the notice has gone out to the vendor. I'm not sure whether we can state who the selected vendor is or that we're ready to before we present it, um, but I'm pulling up the documentation on how many folks applied for this. Um, if I could ask, you know, OPD's opinion, are we able to announce who we've selected before we're ready to put the award through? Lenora Lockett, Office of Procurement and Diversity. Was this an RFP? Uh, yeah. So if it was an RFP, you can obviously detail who submitted. And um, if you notified the vendor, you should have notified the other vendors. So you should have done a recommendation of award. Have you done that? Or if you have not done that? Yeah. Then yeah, you can, if you've we done a recommendation the of award, then the other. Last week. Then yes, you can detail the all the vendors and who you recommended the award. There's nothing. Okay. There's not a commitment into the contracting authority, which is county council, based on my understanding and the dollar value. There's no commitment Perfect. or contract until the county council approves it. Okay. So um, we got six bids, and the bidder that was selected was Americab. And again, we'll be putting that forward to county council once the contract is drafted. And uh, who were the other five bidders? Sure. Um, there was a company called Curb Mobility out of Long Island, New York. There is Future Age, which does businesses provide a ride. They're here in Cleveland a vendor called Freedom To Go Transportation Services. They're in Garfield Heights. And we put Family First Transportation Services out of Brooklyn Heights. And then Emanuel Ventures as well out of Euclid. Okay, thanks for the information. You're welcome, Councilman Miller. Thanks, Paul. Absolutely, Dan. You're welcome, too. Okay, are there any additional questions? Madam Chair, this is, this is Trevor. Just one quick question for Dan. Dan, have we seen, um, ha has the usage been the same under the pandemic, or have you seen a significant decline, or has it been pretty much flat, or just curious of how you've seen the overall usage of the uh, service? It's definitely down from the start of the pandemic. Prior to the pandemic, we were probably seeing about five to six thousand dollars from these alternate uh, vendors, which is, would, wouldn't be the primary. Um, now, during the pandemic, we've seen between fifteen hundred and uh, three thousand, so a significant drop off. Thank you. Appreciate it. Sure. Uh, Man Baker, just one question, also. This is uh, backdated to November uh, 1st, 2019. Um, so, and you said there was just one invoice um, yeah, that yeah, there, was unaccounted for? How much sure. is that invoice? Uh, that, that invoice was prior to the pandemic. It was $5,321. Okay. And that, that's the one and only that we will be paying for? Other than that, it's our beginning of this year? Oh yeah, we, we we we've been paying it concurrently through the through the entire year of 2020 and uh, the start of 2021 as well. Um, okay. This is just one outstanding invoice because the service dates didn't coincide with uh, the alternate procurement process. Got it. Okay, I appreciate that. Thanks. Absolutely. Okay. Any additional questions on this item? 
Okay, hearing none, I make a motion to approve. Can I get a second? Second. Second, Mr. Second. Seconded by Councilman Miller. Um, all those in favor say aye. 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 Okay, um, item approved. Next, uh, moving on to the consent agenda. Yes, uh, moving on to consent agenda item number BC 2021 66. Okay, let's take a moment to review the consent agenda item. Are there any questions on the consent agenda item? Okay, hearing no questions, I make a motion to approve the consent agenda items. Are, is there a second? Second, this is Dale. Seconded by Councilman Miller. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Consent agenda item has been approved. Next item. Moving on to other business, we have one time sensitive mission critical. Item BC 2021-67, Department of Public Safety and Justice Services, recommending an award on a purchase order to ESI Incorporated in the amount of $3,219 for the repair of automated license plate reader camera equ equipment. Good morning, this is Mary Beth Vaughn from Public Safety and also on the phone is Sergeant Devlin who oversees the county da uh, data warehouse. This repair was for an emergency repair to the license plate reader cables that were damaged at the intersection of Carnegie and Ontario last summer. Due to public safety considerations, the Sheriff's Department authorized the emergency repair as this is a critical law enforcement tool. We received the invoice in December and at that time set about um, processing it, setting up the purchase order. We did run into a delay because we needed to get the vendor to register in the supplier portal for ERP in order to convert the um, purchase order. Okay, thank you. Are there any questions on this item? Uh, just one, Nancy Baker. Just curious. I'm sorry, just curious how this got damaged. Sergeant Devlin, can you answer that question? Uh, yes, I can. Uh, good afternoon, Sergeant Devlin, Sheriff Department Group. Uh, to my understanding, there was construction work going on at that intersection. Uh, it is being determined that there was a City of Cleveland contract or uh, workers or outside contractors uh, that was doing work at that intersection. Uh, we are working with the City of Cleveland Public Works Department to uh, determine that. And if it is determined that it was uh, City of Cleveland, then they can be reimbursing for that repair. But at this time, it is still 100% unclear as far as who or how it got damaged. Thank you for that. That was my, my question is whether or not this would have been reimbursed if it was caused by an accident or even uh, qualified for insurance coverage. Sorry, Councilwoman Wolfen Baker, was that a question or is it just a statement? Uh, no, it's, I guess it's good to know that you're pursuing reimbursement. I, okay. I would imagine you would also, you know, research if it was insured. Um, Correct. But either way, yeah. We just want to get the like vendor nothing. paid since they were very responsive. Yeah. And then we'll get our money back. Okay. I agree. Thank you. So, uh, this is Dale and, uh, I could not hear the response to uh, Nan's question about how the how the accident how the the uh, damage occurred. Uh, when the answer was being given, the phone connection sounded like uh, a truly loud plane was going overhead. I don't know what the problem is, but it just sound it you just couldn't hear. So, so could somebody summarize what the answer was? I'm sorry, yes, this is uh, Sergeant Dublin again. Sorry about that, Dale. Yes, there was construction going on at that intersection. Uh, by the time we realized that the cable was cut, okay, uh, the construction was no longer going on at that intersection. We are currently working with the city of Cleveland to determine if this was a Cleveland contract 
and or extremely uh, contractor that accidentally cut that cable or if this was a outside project not having to do with the city of Cleveland. If it was a project that was associated with the city of Cleveland, the city of Cleveland has agreed to uh, reimburse us the cost of that repair, but it is still being investigated. It has not been 100% determined uh, who actually damaged the cable at that intersection. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Are there any additional questions on this item? Madam Chair, this is Trevor. I just, I missed the dollar amount. Can, Mayor, can you repeat the dollar amount, please? $3,219. Thank you. Thank you. Any additional questions? Hearing no additional questions, I make a motion to approve. Can I get a second? And second, Mr. Trevor. Seconded by Mr. McAleer. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Um, item approved. Is there any additional public comment? Okay. Um, hearing no additional public comment, I make a motion to adjourn. Can I get us? Is there a second? Oh, <laughs> Seconded by Lenore Lock Lockett. All those in favor.